Welcome to New York Got Game. All right, we are back with a new episode of New York Got Game. We're about three weeks into the NBA season, but this week we're going to have a focus on college basketball in the Big Apple. But before we look into the college game, we got to take a look at where the local NBA teams are right now. After two and four start, the Knicks, they've won three games in a row, all of those at home, including a win over the New Look Clippers with James Harden. And now the Knicks, they sit at five and four. The offense is looking better than it did to start the season, which has fans happy. However, now the Knicks are going to embark on a five-game road trip that starts Monday night. They'll go to Boston, Atlanta, then to Washington, Charlotte, and then Minnesota. Now, I took some time, caught up with New York Post Knicks beat writer Stefan Bondi, and she shared his thoughts about what we might learn about the Knickerbockers during this five-game trip. You know, if you look at this road trip in totality, yeah, it, it starts off really tough in Boston, one of the hardest places in the NBA to play, for sure. Uh, but then after that, it goes to Atlanta, and they've already won in Atlanta, so they show they can win that win there. Then Washington, that's a very winnable game. And then at Charlotte, they just killed Charlotte. And then it ends in Minnesota. So I think for me, the Knicks have to be going into this road trip thinking there's no reason why we can't go three and two. Um, and I think that should be the goal. And, you know, anything less than two and three, I think, is a disappointment. Anything less than that would be disappointing for Knicks fans. They want to see them come out with a winning record. We'll see how that all plays out. Now, as for the Nets, they're without their leading scorer, Cam Thomas, for a couple of weeks with an ankle sprain. However, Brooklyn's hanging right in there. On Sunday, they got a victory over Washington. They improved to 5-5 five and five on the season, so right there at 500. Upcoming games this week for the Nets. They host the Magic on Tuesday before visiting the Heat on Thursday and then returning home to host the Sixers next Sunday. So interesting stretch there for the Nets. All right, that's a look at the NBA teams. Time to dive into some New York college basketball. We've got a special guest with us this week to help break it all down. All right, the men's college basketball season is already underway. There's been a lot of buzz coming into this season about college basketball in the Big Apple, especially around the St. John's Red Storm, the new head coach, Rick Pitino. So we're going to talk some college hoops today, and we're going to do it with the best person covering college sports in NYC. He and I, we go back to our days of covering high school basketball, various gyms around NYC. It's my guy. Zach Braziller. Zach, how you doing, man? Hey, man. Checks in the mail. Thank you very much for that uh, introduction. <laughs> no, no check in the mail. Good to have you here, man, on the show. We've done a lot of videos together, but I'm glad oh, to yeah. have you in studio. How's it going? Hey, it's, it's great. Season's underway. Yep. You know, um, previews are in the uh, rearview mirror, and we're getting some actual games here. It's fun. Yeah, we're getting some actual games. I want to start it off with you with talking about there's been a lot of discussion around college basketball in the Big Apple, right? We've seen the buzz with St. John's. We saw the run with St. Peter's a couple of years ago. Where do you think college basketball is in the New York area right now? Like, what's the state of college basketball right now in this New York metropolitan area? You know, I, I think all the attention right now, and justifiably so, is on St. John's. I, I mean, look, St. John's has not been a good program for a little over two decades. They've made the NCAA tournament three times you know, in that span. And now here you have a Hall of Fame coach, Rick Pitino, a New Yorker who's coached the Knicks, who's, you know, probably is his last job. I know we, we, we've probably said that a lot about Rick Pitino, but that's the feel, that this is his last job. And that he's here to bring St. John's back to what it was under Luke Karnaseka. And I know I wouldn't bet against him. Now, is he, can he get this team to a Final Four in the next four or five years? That remains to be seen. But to me, this is a program that has fallen on some hard times, and now here you have this all-time great coach in here. He's remade the roster. There are expectations that they can make the tournament and win their first NCAA tournament game in you know since 2000, which would be 24 years by the time the tournament's held. You know, look, there's some other interesting stories, but it's it's really all about St. John's this year. There's no question about that. The teams across the river are down. Seton Hall and Rutgers. St. John's are going to be the best team in the area to me by a considerable margin. And I think they're going to be a good team. I don't think they're going to be a great team, but I think they're going to be a very good team that's going to get better as the year goes on. And I think we'll say it's good for college basketball in the New York area when St. John's is good, when they are clearly this best team in the area like that. People like to see that. But when we talk about the St. John's team and you look at them, people are going to say, okay, there's a lot of buzz with Rick Pitino, right, Zach? We've been talking about this for months. How good do you think this St. John's team can be this season? You know, look, it's going to be very interesting you know, how these pieces fit because it's a, it's a whole new team. You know, it's, it's a brand new team, and we really don't know what to make of them yet. They won their first game against Stony Brook, 90-74. They look good. 
you know, Danis Jenkins, Chris Ledlam, Jordan Dingle played after missing the whole preseason with a shoulder injury. It's going to be a team that Patino said it's a bunch of times. We're, we're going to get better as the year goes on because it is such a new team. You have guys who are coming from places where they're used to getting 20, 25 shots a game, and now that's going to be cut. You have young players. You have unproven guys. And, you know, there are going to be bumps in the road. There's no question about it. This is a team that's been together two or three years. It's a team that just has known each other basically since June, and sometimes that does take time. It's going to take some time. It's going to take time to gel. I think fans sometimes want things to happen so quickly. But you also talked about this because most people think this is going to be the last stop for Rick Pitino, right? Last job. He's going to want to do a good job here with the Red Storm. Do you think he can get this program to a position where they can consistently compete for national championships? Is that the place you think he can take this team? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's obviously his goal. Um, you know, I, I did a big big piece for our college basketball preview before the season where I talked to a lot of people who really know Rick, whether it's a Mick Cronin, Billy Donovan, guys like that. And, and you know, look, now the question is what they brought up is, before, before the season, there's usually about 12 or 13 teams that you could say realistically could make a Final Four. Can Rick Pitino get St. John's to that place where they're one of those teams? That remains to be seen. I do think he's going to get them to be a team that's at least, you know, in the conversation to be ranked um, in the preseason. That's going to be a team that you're expecting to make the tournament. And that it's not, it won't be crazy to say they can make a Sweet 16 or Elite 8. Can he get them to elite, elite status where they're a team that people say could and should make a Final Four? I'm not sure if I'm ready to go there yet. I, you know, he's got a six-year contract now, and he said he wants to fulfill that contract. He's 71 years old. Um, he doesn't look like he slowed down, I'll tell you that. He does I, not. He doesn't look like that. <laughs> he doesn't. I went to a practice. They, were at, they went at it for three hours, and he was stopping practice every 10 seconds to teach. Um, you talked to, you know, he, he absolutely never stopped um, during the spring and summer when he was recruiting. They, he works out every day. He does not look like a 71-year-old, but, you know, People do tire. It, it's the, the way of it's the way of life. You know, we're we're getting old ourselves here. So yeah, you didn't have to do that. We don't we don't, <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't got to go there again. But you're right. Father time comes for us all. Right to the point. Yeah. But yeah, no. Look, I do think he. I think they're a tournament team this year. I think they have a chance to maybe win a game or two. I think they're going to get better. He. You know, this is obviously. It's always important when you have a new coach to win right away because that only helps recruiting. Um, but no, look, I, I like their team. They're, they're deep, they're experienced, they got guys who can shoot the three, and, that, and then you throw in the coach. That's, those are some pretty important factors when you look at successful teams. Yeah, the foundation seems to be really good for St. John's right now. We, a lot of buzz, like we said, around St. John's. Expect them to be the best team in the area. But we're going to talk about a team in the Boogie Down Bronx. We're going to talk some Fordham hoops. 25 Rams wins excuse me, for the Rams last season under Keith Ergo. Can they build upon last season's success? Do you think this Rams team could be better this year than they were last year? Is that possible? I think they can be better, but they're not going to win as many games. Now, look, last year's schedule, the non-conference schedule was very soft. It was among one of the worst in the country. The Atlantic 10 had a really rough year. I expect the league to be better. So, look, Ford might end up winning 16 or 17 games, yet they're not necessarily a worse team than, than they were last year. They have some good young players, Will Richardson, Angel Montas. I, I really like Keith Ergo. I spent some time with him uh, last year. He's an incredibly energetic guy. You know, it's, it's like he, you know, he, he's got coffee strapped into him. He, you know, he never, he never stops. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, look, it's a, it's a process over there. It's, it's kind of like St. John's where it's a program that's really not had much success for a long time. And it's hard in this transfer era to build – you know, sustained success when you're talking about a program that hasn't had it because you develop a good player and he's going to hit the transfer portal. It's, it's, a, it's really challenging, but they do have some good young players and he's, you know, he's kind of, he's building the culture there, a build, you know, of toughness, of playing defense, of being, you know, of being a really good rebounding team. They had a tough loss the other day against a, a good Cornell team. And I think the Ivy League is terrific this year. You already saw it with Princeton beating Rutgers and, and Yale playing Gonzaga tough for, for a while. Um, but, yeah, look, last year, they're, they're, they're not going to get to the win total last year just because their schedule's tougher. They get St. John's in the non-conference. The Atlantic 10 will be better. But I do think that doesn't necessarily mean there's not progress. They don't win as much as they did last year. Right. So this could be a situation where they're better than they were, just don't have the wins right. that they did last year. We're also going to move out to Long Island. We're going to do that really quickly. The Hofstra Pride, they finished third in the CAA last season under Speedy Claxton. Now, they haven't been to the NCAA tournament since 2001, so a long time for them, too. 
Do you think the Pride, they're in position to make some noise this year? Can they move up in the ranks of the CAA? Yeah, look, I, I think Hofstra is, is, is going to be a very good team. They lost their, their two-time player of the year, Aaron Estrada, to the transfer portal. But they bring back Tyler Thomas, who's a very good player. Jaquan Carlos, a point guard from Brooklyn, is a guy who's gotten better. Darlinson Dubar, a, a really talented wing. I think Hofstra's got a real good chance to make the tournament. I do. The CAA is very tough at the top with Charleston and um, teams like that. But I do think Hofstra has a, has a shot to make, do some damage in March. Now, they, they lost, a, lost a tough game to Princeton. Princeton made the Sweet 16 last year. It's a very good team. Um, I do. I, I think in some ways they might be better off without Estrada. As good as he was, they kind of became the Estrada show where if he didn't have it, they were really in a tough spot. Now, I think they're going to have more balance this year. Mm -hmm. now, look, when he was on, they don't have as anyone as good as him. That's, there's no question about that. The guy won the league, league, league's player of the year honors two years in a row. But I do like Tyler Thomas's ability to kind of take that next step as a star. And I think they, they might just be a, maybe a little tougher team to defend because you're not just, there's that one guy you're looking to shut down. All right, so Hofstra Pride, definitely keep your eye on them here. Last thing for me, real quick, because we got to get out of here, two-part question. Which New York school has the best men's team and which New York schools do you think will be dancing come this March? Look, I, I don't think there's any question at St. John's. They're the, they're the best team. I, I don't really see anyone who's even close. Um, when you're talking about local teams in the area, they're going to be a tournament team. I, I think they're going to be a, you know, a, 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 a seven seed in the, in the tournament. And then the other two teams I'm picking are Iona and Hofstra. Um, we just talked about Hofstra. Iona has a new coach. But look, this is a team, a program that's, that's used to winning, that that just finds a way into the tournament every year. They have a, you know, look, Tobin Anderson did a great job in his one year, yep. you know, at FTU. Remember, he inherited a program that won four games. And then he, he comes in and FTU, he gets in the tournament, pulls off a stunner, the only the second number 16 seed to ever beat a one when they got the better of Purdue. And he's rebuilt that Iona roster again. Now, I don't know if Iona is, has any, is as good at the top as they were last year when they had Walter Clayton, Danis Jenkins, but they might have more depth, and they're coming off a nice win over Sacred Heart, which was the pick, which was the team that's supposed to win the NEC. So I, I do think Iona is going to be a team in that MAC tournament, which is always unpredictable. But I, I, I like Iona and Hofstra to join St. John's in the tournament. All right, there you go. Iona, Hofstra, St. John's has college basketball in the New York area looking good. The man covering it, who does such a fantastic job for the New York Post, is my guy Zach Brazilla. Zach. Glad to have you here on New York Got Game. Thank you for joining me. And uh, you got to come back and talk some more hey, college hoops soon. Anytime, man. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. That's my guy, Zach. Check him out. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of New York Got Game. A lot to look forward to this week, including St. John's. They got a big game at the Garden versus Michigan. That should be a good one. We're also going to see what the Knicks can do on the road and if the Nets can climb above 500 this season. But. It's time to bounce. We'll be back next week with a whole new episode. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on the New York Post and SNY YouTube channels. For my editor, Catherine Cooper, producer, Brian Rakowski, and director, Zach Taub, I'm Dexter Henry. And thanks for watching New York Gut Game. Boom shakalaka.